Good evening, everyone. It's February 25th as I record this. Uh, this year, shop tours seem to be going out at the end of the month rather than the beginning of the month, and I may try to change that, but uh, I just finished watching Rob Boas' recent shop tour, and he reminded me by watching that that I haven't done mine for February, so here we go. Mine's going to be quite a bit briefer. Um, not quite as many things, not quite as many rooms, but still... I think we're making good headway in here. So let me start here on the right when we first come in, as I always do. There's my new bandsaw. Hasn't found a home yet. It's going to go where the old bandsaw is, I think. But for now, it's fitting there. It has a slightly smaller footprint. Um, it feels a lot smaller because the base is so narrow, though it, in terms of actual footprint, it's almost as big as the other one. But in any case, there it is. Um, here we've got... That's the table my planer used to stand on, and it needs to get thrown out or passed on to somebody else. Right now I'm just using it uh, as a desk, frankly, but it's going to get pulled out of the shop. Garbage pail in the back, and here across the table saw is the template for the next quilt rack. You can see I'm going with kind of a blade of grass inspired. That's going to be the side profile, and today when I'm done shooting this video, I think I'm going to size each of the pieces and then go up in the go up in the attic and pull out some of the lumber I got from Carrie Holtman so many years ago and uh, bring a couple of those boards down to use I think I'm gonna make this front arch here and the bottom piece out of what I believe is Apple I'm not honestly sure what it was it was from her mouse poop covered pile of lumber but it's a nice uh, almost blonde whitish wood and it should contrast nicely with the back two blades, which are probably going to be walnut. So that's that's about to be the work in the shop. But as we come along, got the tool cabinets, which are now a little bit higher, and underneath them still my screwdrivers, and hanging here on the side, extension cords and air hoses. Here's the rolling rack that used to have my miter saw. The miter saw is off it for a little while now, and I've managed to squeeze my planer and my drill press on there. And you can see the planer just barely hangs off the edge here, and the drill press just barely hangs off the edge there. Uh, and the drill press just fits in between these shelves and the cabinet there, but uh, it does all fit in there nicely. I still need to pull it out to use it, but still, um, so far I like it. I think it's a more effective use of the space, and it gets lets me get rid of that stand that's there behind the table saw, so that's just that much more foot, uh, floor space, one. Here is my Festool shelving, which since the last shop tours I've made it wider and higher on the wall. Um, the next thing I'm going to do with this set is actually build a cabinet to house the sanders and get rid of the damn sustainers. I think the sustainers are fantastic if you're working out in the field. But if you're working in a shop, I can't wait to get rid of them. Um, I don't understand the guys who only work in their shop and keep them in there. I'll admit that I have for years, but that's more a result of laziness and other pressing projects. Other guys don't seem to have the desire to throw out the cases that I do. I want to open a door, reach in, grab it, and pull it out. I don't have to take the case off the shelf, open it, put it together. Um, I'm going to be very excited when I get rid of those sustainers. And that'll be in another cabinet that'll kind of continue this row across, but that's probably a couple months away. There's my spray foam kit, my sharpening setup with some casters on that shelf of miscellaneous stuff, my vacuum, and as we come over here, I finally have my tracks for my track saw hanging up on the wall. That was a result of moving the Festool stuff over a little bit and winning a little bit of space. There's some rulers and a straight edge. And I saw and my levels, these cabinets here, which I think they're going to get reorganized. At some point I'm going to come in here and empty all the drawers and put them all back together and clean them out, but not quite yet. Sitting here on the bench is a clock that I have some repairs to do for a friend. You can see, I don't know if the shadow's blocking it, but you can see there next to the 9, there's a couple chips in it and I need to patch them and then kind of dye it and make some repairs so that's a project I'm working on and this slab here is going to be a computer desk in the house though I'm not sure when I'm gonna get back to that because I'm still working on the bathroom and 
this quilt rack that's on the band saw, uh, table saw right now, excuse me, has a due date of sometime in April. It's for a birthday presents, so uh, this is probably going to have to wait. But as I come around still with the tour, back here you can see it's where my big squares have been relegated to. I have to come up with a good solution for them. These big MDF boards that Woodpecker provides them in are wonderful and protect the tools, but um, they just take up too much wall space to keep them in that. So I was actually thinking of getting a piece of maybe MDF or OSB or something and milling it to hold all of the squares nested in each other. What you see in the back there is the 26 inch square and behind the T squares is a 12 inch square. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that's the 18 inch square. The 12 inch square is in the drawer. I have a 6 inch square hanging on the wall and I, I've ordered the 8 inch one that they haven't made yet. So I'm going to have a set of five of them. I'd like them to nest in each other and take up a lot less space. But I got to think about that and how I want to store them. In front of them is my new joiner, uh, which is going to get lots of use during the quilt rack project, and I'm very excited to put it to use. You can see there are the casters I bought to move it. I need to get some custom steel brackets made to mount the casters, and then what I'm going to be able to do is take the joiner and push it tighter against the wall. I'm going to take the power switch, which is up on that nice big paddle, and move it down over here somewhere and then it'll easily fit beneath this stand. Now this stand for the miter saw was originally sized to accommodate my prior Delta joiner which was actually the bed on the Delta was taller than the bed on the Powermatic. Um, so the Powermatic will fit underneath it easily once I move the power button. The way I'm going to mount the casters they're only going to raise the tool up by about half an inch, three quarters of an inch. It's going to still be very very low so it should have no problem fitting there. And it, it is rather wide. It's an 8-inch machine with this nice rounded belly in the front. Um, but it will be much closer to the wall than it is now and only stick out a little bit. Um, one thing I do need to do is move this leg because you can see it's longer than my whole joiner and it sticks out underneath the saw itself, not just under the wing. And to replace that leg, you can see it's in clamps here. Those are OSB brackets I had thought of using for some other shelves and I just glued them all together to make one massive bracket. So I need to square that up a bit and that's going to get mounted on the wall over here under the saw to replace this leg and keep the miter saw nice and stiff. Um, there's the rest of the red cabinets that didn't fit in the other corner or underneath there with a couple toolboxes. Not the ideal spot but it's out of the way. And here, is, as always, is my, my rigid vac with the cyclone, absolutely fantastic. And my old rigid bandsaw, not so fantastic. And behind the bandsaw, sheet good and lumber storage. Um, one thing I kind of skipped past is I've got lumber storage up here. That's been there for a while. It was certainly in the old shop tours. My clamps are still up in the corner. And I've got more lumber storage above the garage door. So... I don't think too much has really changed since the shop tour last month. A lot has changed since the shop tours last year, but February is proving to be a somewhat slow month in the shop. A couple little tweaks, finishing projects in the shop that I started in January, but we're about to jump into quilt building, quilt rack building time. So should be active, and when we finally shoot the tour next month, I expect the shop to be quite a bit dirtier. Um, some sharp, my sharpening kit, mess kit, and here's a little bit of a new 